Okay, everyone. Time to get something done for St. Patrick's Day. I have with me one year old. Well, I've had it for one year. I don't know how old it was when I bought it, but it's Crayola Air Dry Clay. And there's was one pound in this bag. And my intention is to try to turn the clay I'm going to be using green. Um, I do not have a strong enough green. There's this one here that when you mix with a white, what's going to happen is it's going to become very light colored unless you use a lot of this. I don't want to do that. So I have this blue here. Now it's supposed to be blue, but there is definitely a purplish hint to it. I have this blue, which is a definite blue. These I all got off of Timu. Um, I really don't want to put a purple look in there because I'm not sure how the green would turn out with a purple in it. So um, I have blue and yellow, standard stuff for making green, but I really need it to be really deep green so that when it mixes with the white of the clay, it will turn out the proper color for a shamrock. And so I might be adding a little bit of this black to deepen that green. Okay, so um, what I need to do is get my container. I'll be right back. I have to make a container for this. Okay, I could not find another container in my house at all. Um, it just, I don't know. I found um, one, so I have to buy more because this is way too small for my needs. Um, I do have other things around. I just don't know where they are, but a baggie, a simple baggie, and I'm just going to begin by putting some blue in it. Now, the baggie will also be useful for mixing the clay with the mica powders. And before I begin all of this, um, I will put on a pair of gloves and my painter's mask. As most of you know that's watched my previous videos, I have COPD, which interferes with my oxygen intake, uh, intake when I wear a respirator. I can breathe better with a painter's mask, but it is something that is actually meant to keep particles out of your lungs. And that's why I now use those until I get a full head mask with an oxygen feed to it. They're quite a bit expensive, so it takes a little bit of time to save up for it. We're looking at about $750, and that's for the hood that goes over your head, uh, the oxygen machine, and the tube, and all that stuff. And if your um, hood gets damaged, then you have to buy another one. That's another $150 to $175. So I'm going to open this up. This has never been opened. I do not have an actual container for this. I could probably use one of my spice jars, but I'm not wanting to do that at this point in time. Let's get all this powder down to the bottom. Well, as close to the bottom as possible. All right. There we go. And all I'm going to use is this popsicle stick. This is basically actually a crafting stick, so... That's what I purchased them as, was crafting sticks. So I'm going to get some on there. Try not to dump any off at this point. Get the baggie opened and place that in there. I'll put one more scoop in. I tried finding a good spoon for this, but it wasn't available, I guess. And I could have probably used a regular spoon, but didn't want to. Make sure you use the baggie to drag off any of that powder. And then I do have, ah, there's the whites. And as you can tell, you will get it on you. That is why I use the gloves. So you just wipe that off so it's not able to float. And then set it to dry. All right, let's get this bag here closed. I'm trying very hard to let the air out very slowly so we can go back in that little container. All 
All right. I shouldn't need any more, but I'm going to just set it aside for the moment. Make sure all the blue is off my fingers. Let my fingers dry a little bit. Now I want to get this just a little bit more situated. You don't want too much of the yellow, you want to start slow. There it fell. Oop. Then my hand hits it. Okay. I won't wipe this off just yet because I might need just a little bit more yellow. But I will cap everything, so. Now you want some air added into this. So you open it wide and then begins it being closed and let's see what we can come up with. All right, still seeing quite blue in there. Tap it all down, down to the bottom as you can. Give the bag a moment to settle. Wipe up anything that's spilled. Okay, I think we're going to have to put a healthier dose in there. I do let the mica try to settle. going to go with a lot this time. And that should be all the yellow I need. If not, I have extra sticks. You do have to be careful with these craft sticks because a lot of them have splinters. And so you really should take some sandpaper and sand them all down for uh, using. All right, let's get this closed up again. Get that down in there. Okay, it's getting to be a good green right there. No, my luck, it'll just turn out to be blue green. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a good clump of clay into there. And then I'll squish it all around until the clay molds into, or I should say the mica molds into the clay. Now you do kind of want to break up the clay just a little bit as you're adding it. So that it's easier to incorporate it. So dump in one. And I want to use a little bit of that clay up. Now, I could have solved the whole coloration problem just by using a uh, polymer clay, and I do have some, but it's so little, it's not going to meet my needs for this project. So just knead it down in there. You might want to warm up your clay as well, so that um, if your room is cold, it will help the clay to absorb more of the mica. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, pause you, and I'll work this all together. And remember, oh, yes, I almost forgot to tell you that adding mica to your uh, air dry clay will, of course, make it more, um, less moist and 
when you make things less moist, they'll tend to dry faster. So if you don't want it to dry out too fast, you might have to add a little bit of water and mush it all together. <coughs> all right, I'll pause you while I get this kneaded. All right. I have got this to the best green that I wanted. However, I do not think it's completely mixed inside. Um, all the mica has been incorporated though. So now I can, sorry about all the rattling. So now I can bring this out of the bag. I hope I don't get a lot of fur into it because I don't let my dogs in and out or out and in. Now I'm probably going to leave a little bit of clay behind because I got it quite warm while I was kneading it. So I'll see if I can get it all out of here. I'm going to just push it down on there. Now the bag looks beautifully green. I'm not sure what it's going to look like when it comes out of the bag. But it did turn into the green I wanted. So that makes me quite happy. Well, the bag does. Let's just see how the clay comes. Okay, not as beautifully green as I was hoping. I would need a lot more mica to do this. Most of the mica apparently stuck to the bag because of the clay. It does have a nice sheen to it though. So more than likely what I will do is instead of putting it back in the bag with more mica, I will probably just go ahead and paint it green when I'm done. So I'm gonna throw the bag away. Now this is my little platform that I made up. Um, it's got a cutting board type of thing, cutting mat. Sorry, I have the hiccups again. It's got a cutting mat um, inside of a baggie. I was able to get most of the air out of the baggie and still fit this in, just barely. It's only got a ridge up here that's closed off. So, just get it this need a little bit more here get it off my glove because I can see the green on my glove from the bag there we go all right so what I'm going to do is make sure I've got plenty of um, moisture still to it because I don't want it to dry too quickly and I think it's got it's just fine for now oh I shouldn't throw the bag away yet because this is something that gets done a little at a time. All right. Um, squish it all together as well as I can. Make sure there's no bubbles. You can see blue streaks there. And this is why I'm using gloves to work the clay. Now, some people would use a cookie cutter. I don't have any cookie cutters for this. And I do have this beautiful wooden roller. And so I'm going to try to work out all the creases. Try to get it evenly rolled out. I don't want it too thick of a piece. I'm not worried about the portion that's going over the edge here because I want that middle. All right. Now that I have this like this, I need a device to do some cutting. And I do have clay tools. They're great. Um, and what I just want to do right now with this is I want to make a shamrock. And I'm not very good free-handed. But I have to do this a little slow so that I'm not creating a bunch of bumpy stuff, excess clay dredges. Oh, look at that. Great piece of wood there. And clovers are kind of heart shaped, but they're not. Of course, move it to however you need to move it in order to trace it out. Now remember, oops, see, I'm dragging it instead of cutting, so I will definitely have to smooth out all of that. Clovers are connected but by a very thin stem. However, this being a clay project, you don't want it that thin. 
and it should be a little bit wider, but well, as I said, I'm not the best at all of this freehand stuff, especially not with tools. Probably went a little too far with that one because I do want the clover to stick together. And as everybody should know, a shamrock is a four leaf clover. Well, not everybody should know, just most of us Irish. Now, I'm only half Irish, but believe me, I did the Irish life. Lots of corned beef and cabbage on March 17th every year. Now, though I do like corned beef and cabbage, I do not like corned beef much anymore because it is so salty. And I know that is tradition. But when you've got high blood pressure, you don't want the salt. Now I have to decide which way of this clover looks the best in order to put the stem in. So I think I'm gonna close this portion off here. And put the stem in kind of here. Okay. Now we just start lifting up the excess. Make sure that you hold down parts that are trying to lift with it. And this is why I was not worried about it going over the edge and having that crease from the cutting mat underneath because all of this gets removed. I'll take this little piece out that got stuck behind. Okay, now I'll pull that bag back out. Kind of a minty green shamrock. Okay, I'm gonna get the, all the air out of this excess here. And I'll go ahead and press all the air out of the bag. That can possibly be pressed out. And you want to kind of really guide all that air right out of the bag. So you get it to a certain point. You hold that down. Start zipping that bag closed. So that as you work that air up and out, I know you can't really see half of what I'm doing. Don't worry. Neither can I. Oh, yes, I get my glasses um, sometime next week. So I'll be able to see better. But now that with the cataract problem, um, yeah. Okay, now we just start redefining and refining the shamrock area. And I need my little bit of water to do that. Don't want a lot, just a little. I'm just gonna put it on my finger for now. And I'm just gonna start smoothing. I'll put a little bit more because I don't want to stick to it. I think I should use the other hand for doing this. Especially since I'm right-handed. One day I'll get better lighting, maybe, because I could really use it, actually, myself. I'm just not sure what type of lighting to get to make it where I can see better and where I'm not having um, a ton of um, shine on everything. Okay, now I did leave a little bit here that shouldn't be there. So we're just going to add that up into that middle. I know my hands create more shadow. And I'm really sorry about that. Now, of course, you know the reason for doing this on a plastic bag is for easier removal when it's dry. 
Okay, let's trim a little bit more of this off. I'm going to definitely have to add some more to where the stem connects. So I think I'll take some off of here. Stubborn, isn't it? Okay. Now I'll smooth that down after I get it reinforced right there. Now, if you all don't want to sit and watch this all the way through with the process, you can, of course, uh, put me on double speed and you'll get to the end faster. I do ask that you do only that instead of skip forward. That's all. I would appreciate it. I mean, you could sit there and put it on um, the double speed and maybe go, you know, make a cup of coffee or a loaf of bread, <laughs> whatever, you know, is a little bit more um, time consuming on my longer videos. I am trying my best to not have such long videos anymore. But some things do require a little bit of time and some people are quite interested in the process. Okay, let's take that off of there. Smooth it into that area. Okay, we're getting there. I'm just going to smooth this one petal. Maybe I'll just finish smoothing everything real quick here all at once. I'll let the water dissipate. It'll dry fast, so I'm not going to worry too greatly about how much I just put on. The clay will absorb a bit of it, but it should not absorb too much. All right, get those edges smoothed out. Now, I do have sponges for this, for smoothing, but I find they cause me more problems. I don't know why. And I'm to the point where I'm going to have to pause you and just allow it to dry now. And of course, there will be a fair amount of sanding after it's dry. Okay, only thing I have left to do, the boy, that petal just turned out really large, didn't it, everybody? Let's see if I can move it as well, just a little. Okay, then I mushed it up just a little bit. Okay, let's get some little striations in. And I can't do things backwards, so I'll just turn this a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pause you and let this dry up. All right, I'm back, and it is not completely dry, but it is dry enough to finish it off. My only issue is, as you can see, it sort of, um, well, started breaking off on the stem. It's going to be glued back on later, but it is what it is, what it is at this point, and I am going to finish it off with painting it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a green paint. 
I do have some available here somewhere. And I do have to lighten it a little bit. And I'll be using two different paints to do that. This one for the darker green portion and this one for blending. It's um, Apple Barrels Multi-Surface Cabana Stripe. Okay, so let's finish it off. And if anyone is interested, um, in its complete form, when it's dry, well, I'll get to that in a future video. I have to get a light that shines from the side or the back so that everyone can see things. Including me. I'm not going to make it perfect. It's just for a small plant decoration, but I do want to get it covered. And then I will end up eventually um, showing you the completed and put together version. in a future video, closer to St. Patrick's Day. Let's just open it up and dip the brush in at this point.
especially if I ever felt like I could do a perfect one, I would probably make a mold out of it. But... I'm not that great with clay. Never really was. I think I made the most perfect um, ashtray as a child from school. At least my mom said so. Times really have changed, haven't they? Because nowadays, if a school sets you to making an ashtray, then you'd be chastised and thrown out and whatever, you know. Okay, just that little bit there. And I haven't used these paints in a long time, so I'm hoping it's still viable. Oh Lord, I don't think so. This is what happens when you don't use your paints up or shake them a couple of times a month. So I'm going to use it anyway. And I'll grab another brush to do that. Then I'm just going to grab some water and kind of thin it out a little bit. And when it's gone goopy like that, it will dry a lot quicker. So if you're going to blend, you're going to want to blend as quick as possible. Okay, I'm going to try to beat the drying process with this because it is drying as quick as it can be. And grab a little bit of water, a little bit on each portion. go it's start to do what I want it to do all 
All right. Now this is where a sponge would have come in handy, but can't really get to it right now. Okay, that's pretty much it, everyone. Thanks for watch watching. If you got a good laugh, um, you know, leave that thumbs up button. If you could sit there and say, ooh, wow, she created what a kid could do. Well, yes, I did. And that's okay, too. Um, but, yes, please, if you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't, well say so you leave a comment hello to everybody that's new here um you will see some weird stuff going on in this channel and uh i would like to thank all my subscribers i know some of you don't watch me anymore but that's Okay, too. Um, sometimes we grow away from channels that we were watching. And there's always a reason for that. And it's always good, no matter what the reason is. Because it's choices, right? Anyway, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about doing so. Also, uh, share. All right. Peace out.